This tutorial will show you how to run a data deployment with Prodly, and will cover most of the major components required for running a successful deployment. With Prodly, you can easily move record and metadata between Salesforce instances with just a few clicks. Before we begin, make sure Prodly has been installed from the Salesforce App Exchange and follow the necessary setup steps to complete the installation. Once installed and set up, navigate to the App Launcher on the top left and search for Prodly App Ops. Section 1 To start, navigate to the App Ops Release tab, which should be located on the top left once you're inside the Prodly App Ops app. When clicked, you'll be guided to the environment section. With Prodly, you can connect to any Salesforce environment using standard Salesforce credentials. Once you establish a connection to another Salesforce environment, it will appear in the environment section of AppOps release and can be used as a source or destination for data and metadata deployments. Prodly does not limit the flow of data between lower and higher environments. In other words, you can deploy from sandbox to sandbox, production to production, production to sandbox, or any other combination. To add a new environment to this section, simply click on the Add Environment button on the top right. First, give the environment a name. This is how it will appear in your environment section moving forward. Next, select what type of environment you are connecting to and then click Add. Log in with the appropriate Salesforce credentials. This page will refresh and the environment will now appear in your environment section. You can also create folders for your environments for a more cleanly organized experience. If you ever need to change an environment name, simply click onto it. Click the pencil icon next to the environment name, make your change, and then click the green check mark on the right. Production and sandbox environments are not the only options when using Prodly. Scratch orgs can be created with a few clicks. Before creating a scratch org, make sure the required setup steps are complete in your production environment. To create a scratch org and add it to your Prodly environments, start by clicking the Create Scratch button on the top right. Next, add a name. If you've defined multiple sources, you can select between them from the Source drop-down menu. Next, choose the Scratch Org duration. Prodly's Scratch Org creation process can preload installed packages, metadata, and seeding data, which can be added by toggling on the corresponding switch and selecting the components needed. By clicking Create Scratch Org on the bottom right, Prodly will start the process of creating the new Scratch Org and preload the org with the components you selected. The time it takes for the Scratch Org to fully load can vary, but once completed, will automatically be added to the environment section of AppOps release and can be used for any deployment moving forward. Section 2 In order to run a record data deployment, Prodly first needs some kind of instructions or roadmap to understand what data you are trying to pull from one instance and copy to another. The way Prodly accomplishes this are through two different components called datasets and deployment plans. First, let's navigate to the settings area of AppOps release. We can do this by navigating to the column on the left and clicking on the gear icon. You can also expand the column by clicking on the Expand arrow. Once inside of Settings, navigate to the Release Template section and install a template of your choosing. Note that datasets will represent a single record being installed, whereas a deployment plan will install multiple. The purpose of this will be discussed further later on. Prodly offers a variety of data templates for you to use at your discretion. These can also be used as a starting point for further customization, and you can always delete these records later if you don't need them. Now that we have a dataset or deployment plan installed, we can run a data deployment. First, navigate to the Sandbox Seeding section of the AppOps Release tab. 
Note that the guided deployment section can see data as well, but will also allow for the deployment of metadata, which will be covered in a different section. Once inside of Sandbox Seeding, select the source and destination of your data deployment. With Prodly, you can seed data in up to five environments simultaneously by clicking on multiple orgs in the destination dropdown. Next, scroll to the Data Selection Method area and select the dataset or deployment plan you previously installed. Before we actually launch the deployment, note that you can also add in top-level filters in Record Selection Criteria. By toggling on the Temporarily Deactivate Events switch at the bottom of the screen, triggers, process builders, workflows, duplication rules, and validation rules will be disabled in the destination orgs during the deployment. Creating a naming convention and applying it to each deployment is important. Over time, your list of previous deployments will grow, and a proper naming convention will aid in your ability to reference previous deployments. Simulating the deployment verifies that the objects and record counts referenced in the dataset match the deployment expectations and can help prevent issues during deployments. Clicking Deploy will send the deployment job to the Prodly servers. Note that Prodly does not store record information on its encrypted servers apart from record IDs, org IDs, and virtual external IDs. Once the deployment has been launched, you'll be re-navigated to the deployment result page within AppOps Release. You can actively monitor the progress of the deployment by clicking onto the Deployment Result or Result link. Completion times for deployments will vary depending on the number of records, objects, and relationships processed. Section 3. In the world of Prodly, a dataset record represents the framework of objects and relationships that are used in a deployment. Within a dataset, we can customize what objects should be used and set limits and rules as to what records should be pulled relating to those objects. First, navigate to the Datasets Home tab within Salesforce. If this page appears blank, it means that no datasets have been created or installed from the Settings section of the AppOps Release tab. To create a dataset from scratch, click New on the top right. This page is called the Dataset Editor. Start by adding a name and optionally a description. Next, take a moment to consider the purpose of this dataset and what Salesforce org it will be sourcing data from. If you plan to pull information from an external Salesforce org, click on the Schema Setting link on the bottom right. The Schema Org pick list will show all Salesforce environments that have been previously added to the Environments section of AppOps Release. The org selected in this pick list will align this dataset with the external Salesforce schema. The Deployment Object pick list on the dataset record will now show all standard and custom objects corresponding to the selected Schema Org. The deployment object that is selected from the pick list will be the starting point of building your dataset. For example, if account is selected as the deployment object, and then we ran this dataset as a standalone deployment, Prodly would begin to copy account records from one Salesforce instance to another. If only certain account records are required for the deployment, record selection criteria can be applied. We can expand the network of objects in this dataset by clicking on the Parent or Child Relationship tabs at the top of the Dataset Editor. By clicking into Child Relationship, we can now select objects to be added to this dataset that have a child relationship, in this example, to the account object. Any object that is selected will then appear as a blue hyperlink. Navigating to a selected child or parent object will allow for the creation of specific record selection criteria relating to that object. This same concept can be applied to every object selected in a dataset. On the top left corner of the dataset record, a breadcrumb trail will be displayed showing your current position in the dataset relating to the deployment object. 
By clicking on the far most left object, you will be taken back to the top level of the dataset record. If any changes need to be made to the fields relating to an object, navigate to the Object Fields tab. By default, all fields will be selected, but by unchecking the Copy All Fields checkbox on the top left, fields can be now selected and deselected at will. Each field has a settings icon to the right, which can be used to alter the field data in various ways during the deployment process. Saving progress along the way is crucial, as the datasets may not auto-save. By clicking the Display As button just beneath Save, you can select the diagram view to see a broader picture of the object relationships being referenced in this dataset. To navigate back to the normal record page, click onto the Display As button again and select Tabs from the drop-down. Now that we've covered datasets, let's discuss deployment plans. A deployment plan is used when there is a need to process multiple datasets in a single Prodly deployment. A good example of this is Salesforce CPQ, as many of its objects are fragmented within the Salesforce schema. First, navigate to the Deployment Plans tab within Salesforce. If this section is empty, this means no Deployment Plan template has been installed from the Settings section of the AppOps Release tab, or that no Deployment Plan has been created in your instance. To create a new Deployment Plan, click New on the top right. We can now start to define the datasets to be used in this Deployment Plan in the form of steps. To create a step, click New in the Deployment Plan Steps section. Add a name and then click Save. Click into the step and then click New to associate a dataset to this step. Then click Save. By clicking back onto the deployment plan related to this step, you'll now see the step and dataset added to this deployment plan. Note that you can also change the deployment order of each step within the dataset. Section 4 In addition to migrating record data, Prodly has the ability to migrate 96% of Salesforce's current metadata components. Note that Prodly's metadata offering is not included with all additions. To run a metadata deployment, first navigate to the AppOps Release tab within Salesforce. From the column on the left, navigate to the Guided Deployment section. Start by selecting a source and destination for the deployment. Unlike with sandbox seeding, Prodly can only deploy metadata to one instance at a time. Once the source and destination are selected, toggle on the switch to the right for Deploy Metadata. The Comparison View pick list allows for the selection of a more narrow list of metadata components. Think of this as pre-filtering your results. These views can be altered or created from scratch by clicking on the Create a Comparison View link. Once a comparison view is selected, click Load Metadata in the Metadata Components window. Load times will vary depending on the component differences that Prodly is able to find. The Metadata Diff view will specifically load any differences it is able to detect between the instances selected above, and can be filtered by where values differ, in source only, in destination only, or unchanged. The Last Modified by User is an additional filter that can be layered on top of the previously mentioned items. Prodly offers an enhanced level of visibility into your metadata. Click into a specific metadata component to then load up the subcomponents related to it. Once identified, click the checkboxes of the metadata components you'd like to push in your deployment. Note that by toggling on the Deploy Data further down the page, metadata and record data can be pushed in a single Prodly deployment if desired. Metadata is always deployed first. 
Clicking Deploy at the bottom of the page will send the deployment job to Prodly servers and begin to run in the background. You can monitor the progress of the deployment by navigating to the Deployment section of AppOps Release and selecting the deployment from the list. For more information, visit prodly.co.